Good morning, everybody. Come on and stand to your feet with us this morning. Man, we're so excited uh, to worship with you this morning. Let's just take a second. I know Sunday mornings can be busy. Let's just close our eyes um, and let's just welcome God's presence in this place today. God, we just thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, we welcome you here. God, we thank you right now. Come on, just join in with me. Just say, God, thank you. God, we thank you for who you are. God, that you are good, that you are faithful, that you love us, Lord, and that we get this opportunity to worship you. We welcome you in this place, Father. We love you. Thank you, Lord. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come on, help me sing. Come rest on us. That's right. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit.
such an honor to get to worship you together, just to get to come before you this morning. God, we love you so much. Come on, just take a second. Again, we're not worried about words on a screen or what's going to happen next or whether or not we like the song, but we're just truly focused on the Lord right now and what he's speaking to our hearts. God, speak to us.
incredible. That's powerful. There's no other name like it. You can't say my name and get that, but you can say the name of Jesus and there is freedom. There is healing. There is hope. You have hope. Come on, sing his name. Sing his name. If you're in the valley, sing his name. Come on, if you feel like you're on the mountaintop today, you still need Jesus. Declare his name. Jesus, Jesus. about to sing this song that it just says that you are worthy of it all. God, and we just, we believe that today. We love you, Lord. So good, Father. We love to worship you.
from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory that's why we do this this morning it's not just because we were lacking for some kind of entertainment right because entertainment can be found anywhere we didn't just come together this morning so that we could be entertained or hear a few songs you can listen to music right but we came this morning and we come together and we sing to the King of Kings because of that simple fact that he deserves the glory. Because all we have is because of him. He is all we have. And so we give him all we have. Every breath that I breathe, I want it to be to glorify and magnify the King. And so that's what we do right now. As we take a breath, we just sing, you are worthy of it all. We get the opportunity this morning right now to join in with the angels as they sing, worthy is the lamb. They never get tired of saying it. They say it over and over and over and over because it's so true. And once you grab a hold of just how worthy and just how good God is, you could never sing it enough. You could never say it enough. He deserves the glory. Come on, you don't have to hold back this morning. Get him praise. Yeah. He deserves the glory. He's so worthy. God, we thank you for that. God, we thank you that you truly deserve all the honor and the praise and the glory. It's all yours. God, with every breath that we have, God, help us to be able to magnify and glorify you. There is no one like you. You are incredible, Father. You are faithful. You're everything we need. And we just thank you for this opportunity we've had to worship you today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give him some praise in the room. Amen. He's so good. It's been such an honor to worship with each and every one of you this morning. Hey, have a seat. You can check out the screen. Good morning and welcome to Maranatha Christian Center. We are so excited that you're here, aren't we, Zion? Whether you're watching online or right here in our physical location, we are so excited that you're here. And I believe God has something so specific and special for you today. So we're so glad you're here. Before we continue with the rest of our service, let's hear this week's announcements. You ready? Our Little Sparks Mother's Day Out program is so excited to begin early registration beginning May 1st for the 23-24 school year. If you register before June 15th, you can receive a 50% discount on your registration fee. Little Sparks is such an amazing time. The kids just really enjoy it and it's just such been such a blessing to us. So we're so excited for your students to join this coming year. For more information on Little Sparks, you can contact our director, Tristan Burks, at mdo at maranathadecab.org. Our MCC kids and Merge students are gearing up for an exciting time at church camp this summer. And to help raise money for that, we are currently having a silent auction, which is happening right now through April 30th. The items up for bid are a handcrafted trunk and a handmade quilt that are actually on display right now in the back of the room next to the area where you're going to place your bid. I already saw some people are bidding, so make sure you join in on the fun. I can tell you from firsthand experience, church camp is not just a time that kids go and play, but it's truly a life-changing event. So make sure that you help our kids as you guys always do. You're such a generous church, and we're so thankful for you. 
That's it for today's announcements. If you'd like any more info on anything you've heard today, you can email info at maranathadecab.org or of course check out our website. If you have your tithes and offerings this morning and you'd like to give those, you can do that now. We have giving boxes at the front and back of the room or you can also give online. So if you have your kids ages birth through eighth grade, you can go ahead and take them to their kids classes now. They're gonna have an incredible morning as well. Everybody else, stand up to your feet, say hi to somebody that you haven't said hi to yet, and we'll be back in just a few minutes, right, with an exciting message from our pastor. Bye, Mommy. <laughs>
Well, good morning. How are you this morning? Good to see you. The Bible says that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation for all men who will believe. The Jew first, then to the Greek. Let me ask you this. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ this morning? Let's give him a praise. Come on. Hey, a little clap offering. What do you think? Maybe a little wave offering. Yeah, Lord, we thank you for We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God. So good to be back home with you. So many things. Man, what a great day you guys had last week. I enjoyed the service so much and uh, appreciate pa uh, Pastor. He's a pastor and former pastor. And Eric Aiken coming and sharing. Eric, you did a great job. I listened to the message. It was awesome. Donna coming on Wednesday night. Heard so many good reports from Donna Hunt message on Wednesday night. And just a great time. Won't you know, we had a great time also. Uh, I tried to hide out and stay on board ship, but they caught me and kicked me off. I was going to go for another round, you know. It, everything went so good when I was gone, I thought, might as well go for another round. You might have noticed that Michelle's not singing this morning. And uh, she, uh, we got home Thursday night, had a good night's rest. Friday had a good day, caught things all caught back up about 8 o'clock. Friday night, we got a text from Cody. He said, just kind of give me a heads up. Uh, looks like things might be moving <laughs> uh, in Oklahoma City. So we thought, well, at least she waited till after we got back from the cruise. And about 3 o'clock on uh, Saturday morning, we got a text. We're going to the hospital. We don't know if we're going to stay or not. So, you know, that got Michelle already thinking. And so she was planning. And then about 4 o'clock, they said, we're staying. So by 5.30, she was on her way to Oklahoma City. So she's had little or no rest. We have a new baby granddaughter. Yeah. So I understand that the parents are doing fine. Christine's doing well. And uh, so Michelle's there uh, helping take care of the, the boys and, uh, and helping take care of things there. So, so many good things. Thank you, guys. One of the reports I heard while we're gone is that this is the friendliest church we've ever seen. I love that. I love that. Thank you for that. You don't know what a blessing that is to me and to Michelle to know that when we're gone, you're still friendly. <laughs> you're not just putting on a show. All right, that's great. That's great. Hey, if you would, turn with me in your Bible to the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. Let me just say this, that that's the first cruise we've ever been on, and it was everything it was hyped up to be. It was so much fun, so much good, so many good times, just a great time. And uh, just the right length, five days was perfect. Uh, we spent two, four days traveling and <laughs> actually spent 40 hours going there and 40 hours coming back. And then we were there uh, uh, two days, one in Costa Maya, one in uh, Cozumel. But uh, even when you're traveling, it's, it's just as much fun. You don't have to get off the boat to have a great time. So uh, I'm not working for Carnival Cruise Lines or anything like that. I'm not getting a kickback. But uh, if they would give me a kickback, I still would say it's a good time. It was a great time, and uh, it's a fun time. So last week, uh, I, I listened to the message. We had a hard time on the ship listening because our, inter our internet was interrupted back and forth. But I did get a chance to, l to listen uh, to the message. It was a great message on flee or follow. That's a, that's a good, thought. good thought. I'm going to kind of follow up, quote, on that flee or follow, no pun intended, no. But uh, on, on a message called truth. Uh, true faith follows by true faith and what true faith does. One of my favorite scriptures I learned a long, long time ago, one of the first verses I ever memorized was in Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, I'm starting kind of in the middle of it. Uh, right before this it says, if you want to find favor with God and man, that's a good place to be, right? Having favor with God and man. You know, it's good to have favor with God. It's wonderful. I'd rather have favor with God than man, but it's okay to have favor with God and man. And it says, if you want to have favor with God and man, do this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. All your ways, it says, acknowledge him, he'll direct your paths. All your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. So, and then it goes on to say, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So, What's that saying to us? You say, oh, that's just a proverb. It's just, you know, it's in the Word of God. So if it's in the Word of God, it's not just a proverb. It is a proverb. It is a truth. It is something we understand. The, the Bible says in, in Proverbs chapter 3, 
Verse 9, it goes on to say, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. Now, he just said, if we'll delight in him and seek him with all our heart and not our own understanding, he'll direct our paths. Now it's saying, honor the Lord with your possession, with your first fruits, all your increase, so that your barns may be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not, be, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For when the Lord loves, whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father and the son in whom he delights. These are some promises that God has given to us. And, and these promises are things that we accept by faith. I want to give you a few definitions of faith. Let me just explain a little. We've talked about this before, but some things over the years that I've kind of collected that, uh, because, you know, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God, right? So what does it mean by having faith? I mean, you're, some people say, well, I just don't have faith. Well, everybody has faith. You're ex exercising faith right now. You're, you're believing that the pew you're sitting on or the seat you're sitting on is going to hold you up. You wouldn't have sat down there if you didn't think it was going to hold you up. So everybody has faith. It's just sometimes we have a trouble having faith in God. And I don't understand why that is so. Maybe it's because we've never really seen God with our physical eyes, but we can experience God. But some things about faith. One is faith is the quality that puts you at God's constant disposal so he can work his works through you. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own sin. All your ways acknowledge him. In other words, put yourself at his constant disposal. Make yourself available to God that he can work his works through you. Another definition of faith is faith says it is so even when it is not so in order that it might be so. Remember the Bible says about Abraham, even though Abraham had not seen a child out of, out of Sarah, they had never had, she was 90 years old, he was 100. But the Bible says that he called those things that be not as though they be. He began to speak about his child, the child that was coming. And people thought he was crazy. Even actually changed his name from Abram to Abraham. Abraham meant father of many nations. So faith says it is so, even when it's not so, in order that it might be so. Also, the next one is faith is confidence in God that results in dependence on him and total obedience to him. That's what faith is, confidence in God, dependence on him, total obedience to him. Everything he says, we say, yes, that's right, I want to do. But it doesn't make good sense. We've had people tell us so many times, you don't, you don't need to do that. That doesn't make good sense to do that. But when God says do something, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Faith, here's another one, I love this one. Faith sees the invisible, believes the improbable, and achieves the impossible. You cannot believe how many times people say, you can't do that. You can't have that. You can't be that. But faith says you can. Faith sees the invisible, believes the improbable, and accomplishes the impossible. Faith sees what God sees and calls it like God sees it. And then the last thing, straight from the Scripture, Hebrews chapter 11 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. As you study that verse out, it says faith is the substance. Well, no, faith is not a substance. Faith is a feeling, an emotion, a, a declaration. No, the Bible says it's a substance. In the spiritual realm, faith has substance. Literally, the term means faith is the title deed. Faith is, a, let me read this in the kind of English I understand. Faith is the title deed of the things that I'm confident that God wants to give me, but I just hadn't seen them yet. Faith is that title deed. God gives you a direction, a guide, gives you an indication that he's wanting to do something, but it looks impossible. It can't happen. You cannot build another church in DeKalb, Texas. No way. You cannot build another building. You don't have enough people to do that. Let me just say this, and I'll go a little detail later. Yes, we did do that, and we're supposed to have it paid off in five more years. It was paid off two years ago. <laughs> Who says you can't do that? You know, when you hit God on the situation, faith is the substance, is the title deed of the things that you're hope. The hope is not, well, I sure hope I have a good day tomorrow. It's the confident assurance. So faith is the it's the title deed to the confident assurance that what God has put in your spirit, he'll bring about. It's confidence in God. Let me give you some examples 
It's so, it's so fun. Now, I have to go back a few, but they happen all the time. One of the really, really big examples of faith in our lives, our ministry, was when God told us to resign our staff position to the church. That didn't make sense. We had two kids and one on the way. And our music pastor said, how are you going to make a living if you resign? I said, don't know. Well, why are you doing this? Because God said to. Faith sees the invisible, believes the improbable, and accomplishes the impossible. God said do it. So we did. And you know, after we did that, within a week after we resigned, someone came to us and told us that God had put it in their spirit to be the first donors in our new ministry and gave us $10,000. That carried us for five months. <laughs> that carried us for a while. <clears throat> but had we never stepped out, we would never have seen. Faith believes it when you don't see it. You step out and do it. Let me give you another example here, a, a more recent example. Just a couple of years ago, <clears throat> we were, you know, or three or four years, I forget, four years ago maybe, we were in the middle of this building project. And well, let me give you another example for that. We were getting ready to start this building project, and God said, I want you to share some money and help drill some wells in Africa with James Robinson Life Ministry, you know. Uh, so we said, okay, we're gonna, we, I'll commit to doing one. They cost uh, $2,800 $2, a well, I believe. We gave $28,000. I thought we'd do one well. Our congregation came together, and someone came to me and said, why did you do that? Y'all are trying to do a building program. Did you know y'all needed that money for your building program? I said, no, we didn't need it. God said he'd do it, and so we were faithful to do that. Then another time during the middle of that, we were, we were just finishing up the, the project, and yes, we did go to the bank and borrow some money. We didn't have all the cash we needed, and we went, and uh, I, I, I got it from a missionary friend that they had a need in the Philippines to put a roof back on the school that the hurricane blew off. The hurricane blew the roof off. They need $2,000. I said, well, we'll give a little offer in that. See, I don't give based on need. I give based on, on what God says. You see, don't ever give based on demand. Give based on command. And I, I, so when I get those things, I just put them up there and say, I'll pray about it. And so God brought that to my spirit. I said, okay, we'll give a little offering out of our mission offering. We'll send them a couple hundred dollars. And I was getting ready, and God said, add another zero. Pay the whole thing. I said, man, we're just not trying to, we're trying to pay for this building. But God said, do that. I said, well, okay. I'm telling you, being obedient to God, smart. Did that. The ink on the check was barely dry. It was still on its way. Someone came by and gave us a check for $200,000. That's a hundredfold return before it ever got where it was going. I'm telling you, faith sees the invisible. It believes the improbable. And accomplishes them impossible. Never be afraid to step out on what God says. Always step out. If God says it, he can handle it. It's just, it, and things like that happen all the time. I know I've shared this story with you about the time we were in Mexico, and this the lady, you know, she said she didn't have any kids, and she'd been praying, but having miscarried, miscarried, miscarried. And God said, pray for her, I'll give her a kid. I said, God, I don't know her. She don't know me. I just met her. A sweet little Spanish lady there working at the hotel. And so I waited till everybody got. I said, hey, I know you've been trying to have a baby. You don't know me. I don't know you. Long story short, because some of you already heard this. I said, but look, God told me if I, I'm a pastor in the United States, if I, if I pray for you, he'll give you a baby. If you want us to do that, I gave her an out. If you want us to do that, we're in room so-and-so. Come see us. We were up there playing cards that night. She knocks on the door, and uh, she says, we're here to pray. She and her husband came together. First of all, we led them to the Lord. They both prayed to receive Christ. And we said, okay, we prayed with them. We left. So, well, that's the last we'll probably hear of them. So a month or so later, she sent me an email. said, I just went to the doctor. I'm expecting. Another month or so later, sent me another email. said, it's twins. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got two God babies, God children there in Mexico. And see, believe what God, I thought, I can't tell her that. I can't go say that, but God said do it. So faith sees the invisible, believes the improbable, and accomplishes the impossible. What they couldn't do, God did. It's the same with Abraham and Sarah. They just believed God, and he did it. So it's, it's, it's easy. God does things. True faith follows, and God honors it. Faith acts. 
on what God says to do. God wants us to be obedient to him. In being obedient to him, therein is the blessing in our lives. I, I'm very convinced that in my own life, I miss so much of what God has for me. And I consider myself a faith person, but I still can, I believe I miss so much because I won't really step out and trust God. I don't, I don't, I want to be more willing to say, God, if you said it, that's all I need to know. And I'll step out. I think all of us could do that some more, don't you? Don't you want to see the hand of God working? Do you want your life to be characterized by what you can accomplish alone? I want my life to be characterized by, they say, only God could have done that. <clears throat> that has to be God. Yes, that has to be God. That's where the blessing is. He's never, let me tell you something now. God is never trying to get something from us. You understand God doesn't need anything. God is not a needy God sitting up there saying, well, I sure hope y'all do something for me today. No, he, he doesn't need us, but we need him. And he's trying to get us to the place where we will believe that we need him and trust him. So when, they, you, know, when, when you read some of these scriptures, yeah, they're just trying to get money. No, we're not. Nobody's trying to get money. God's not trying to get your money. He's trying to get your heart. He's trying to get you in a place where he can pour out his richest blessings upon you. God doesn't need anything from you. He's not trying to get something from you, but he is trying to get something to you, and that's what's important. Listen to this verse. And when you hear this verse, you're, oh, yeah, I've heard that verse before. I know where that's going. Listen to what it says, Malachi chapter 3. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And then it says, and try me. King James, this is New King James. King James says, and test me. Put me to the test. And do what? And see, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, there will not even be room enough to receive it. Does that sound like God's trying to get something from you? That was kind of weak, but I know I interrupted you. It was going to get bigger, wasn't it? It was going to get bigger. Does that sound like God's trying to get something? He says, would you trust me? Would you try me and do what I say so that I can be free to bless you beyond? I like saying like that. He wants to bless your socks off. You say, I'm not wearing socks. He wants to bless your sandals off. <laughs> he wants to, he, God's never trying to get to us. He's trying to get through us. He wants to bless us and protect us and to keep us. The grace of God demonstrated by the fact that he has a plan and purpose for our lives, and he wants to reveal that plan to us that purpose to us. He designed it specifically for each one of us. You have a specifically designed purpose for your life that's given specifically to you. And there may be other people doing similar things, but yours is unique. Yours is one of a kind because he knows you. He sees you. He watches you. I, I, I've been watching The Chosen some, and I'm interested, was interested. Remember when <laughs> Jesus told the disciple, well, I saw you when you were sitting out there under the tree. I know who you are. And he said, you didn't see me. You weren't out there. He said, no, but I know you. You see, we think sometimes God doesn't really see us. He doesn't really pay attention. Oh, no, he knows us. But not only does he just know us, he knows us and wants to be involved in our lives. He wants to be involved and actively involved in our lives. He designed it specifically for us, for each one of us. Yet sometimes we fail to consider this. We think we've got to get out there and make it our own way. You know, we, we love that. I know a lot of people have sang the song. Elvis is the one I remember most. Frank Sinatra sang it too. You know which one I'm talking about? I did it my way. Yeah, when you did it your way, the final curtain falls, and what do you got? Nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you, when that final curtain falls in my life, I'm not going to have nothing. I'm going to have something because I'm going to have eternity with him, and I'm going to have rewards for the times that we maybe did suffer a little bit on this earth, maybe went through some hard times. Maybe we, we did get ridiculed for believing in a God that we can't see. Many people have lost their lives for a God they never saw, but they met him, and there's a personal relationship with him. And in that personal relationship, they've learned him, of him to the point that they know he can be trusted. Faith to follow. Faith that follows him. 
Faith will do what he says do. We can move on through life giving God everything instead of not giving God anything. The day you were born again, the day you received Christ, we talked at the very beginning, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. When you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, that wasn't the culmination of life. That was the beginning of life. That just opened the door so you could experience the reality of a relationship with Jesus Christ and, and a fellowship with the Father all through life and, and trust in his guidance and his dependence, trust in his love to have the best for you. I heard it said one time, and there are certain things that I hear, you know, years ago, and they stick in my mind, this is one of them. God always reserves the best for those who leave the choice up to him. God wants you to have your best life. It doesn't mean you're not going to have trouble. All people have trouble. We're living in a sin-sick world that has trouble. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But God wants us to have a good life. Instead of wondering all our lives what we could have been doing or should have been doing, we can choose to believe that the Lord has the best plan and commit ourselves to it and discover his path for our life and get on with it. Moving on as soon as we can into what God has for us. How do I do that? Okay, the first verse says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. If we don't fully trust God, we would be reluctant to follow. The reason a lot of people don't follow God is because they don't trust him. In fact, that's the, that's the number one reason. If we really knew the heart of God and trusted God and understood his way, we'd follow in a minute. But somewhere in the back of our mind, someone has put the thought in your mind that God's trying to trick you, God's trying to get to you, God can't be trusted, that if you put your trust in God, he's going to make you do something stupid or silly or that you don't want to do. That's not the case at all. Most of us in here are parents or will be parents. And I know one thing, a parent never tries to do something to specifically harm their kid. Their child. We, we, we will go out of our way to do everything we can do to make their lives sometimes even too easy. <laughs> we do everything so they don't have to have any kind of suffering. We, we try to candy coat everything and rose petal the, the pathway that they're going down on. God says, you're my child. Trust in me. And I'll lead you in the way which you should go. I'll, I'll show you the things you don't, you don't already know. See, if we don't trust God, we're reluctant to follow the path that he's chosen for us. But that's what is required to follow the Lord. And if we do that, the benefits will be so great. God commands us to trust him, to depend on him, trust his integrity. The basis for our trust is his sovereignty. His sovereignty means that he's over everything. I heard someone say this. I, I, I like this. God knows everything about everything. He's, he knows more than Google. <laughs> he knows more than, what's that? Siri. Hey, Siri. Uh-oh. If I said that, they'll say something back to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Be quiet, Siri. Don't talk yet. <laughs> I use that a lot, but I use this, hey, God, what about this? Where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do about this situation, about this circumstance? You know, a lot of times we, we, we ask God to give us direction so we can decide if we want to do it. <laughs> you ever do that? God, just tell me what you want to do. And he tells us, well, I don't want to do that. I mean, I, I thought, I, you know, it's not a tell me and I'll let you know if I'm agree. Many times God withholds our direction until our heart gets placed where he knows we're willing to be obedient. That was the case in my life for so long. I kept asking God to do this and do that and do this and do that and do that. But he knew my heart wasn't right. I was just looking for an easier way out. I didn't really want to serve him. I just wanted things to be easier for me. Little did I know that the greatest blessing came when I surrendered my life totally to Christ. It totally revolutionized my life. I literally became a different person. Not physically, but I, my college friends would come by and visit me. Uh, the, Right after I surrendered my life to Christ, they said, you're not the same guy we went to college with. I said, no, it's so much better. They didn't like it that much, but I did, and I didn't care what they liked because I'm not living for them. I mean, they weren't the ones living inside this skin. I was living in this skin. I knew what was going on. It was miserable. But when I surrendered my life totally to Christ and said, look, not mine, but yours, Lord, 
your will. It made such a difference in my life. It changed the way I looked at life. It changed the way I looked at people. It changed the way I looked at the world. It was just so different. God says, trust me, his sovereignty. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think, the Bible says. Sovereignty doesn't mean that God makes everything happen to your life. It means he allows you to make your own choices. He knows what's right, but he's not going to interfere. He's going to let you make your own choices because he doesn't want robots. He, he could have made us robots, and he could have put us out there and wound us up and said, now, go out, and you can only do what I've programmed you to do. But no, even knowing that man would fail in his sovereignty, he said, I'm still going to create man because I've got a plan. I'll redeem them. Therefore, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God to salvation. His sovereignty is his wisdom, his power, and his righteousness all wrapped up in one. The Lord's purpose is always good, even though you don't understand it sometimes. God's purpose is good. You say, well, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, a lot of people have asked that. Read it. It's in the Psalms. Why do bad things happen? And why do good people seem to go by? Look, life can be deceiving. What you see can be deceiving. Yes, bad things do happen to good people sometimes, and we're living in a sin-sick world. I mean, if, if I, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, but if I slap my thumb with a hammer, it's going to hurt just like the sinners, you know? We're living in a world where, yes, we're battling sickness and disease in this world all the time. I believe I've, been ha I've had a supernatural health all my life, but, you know, I've still got this knee right here. And I'm, still, I'm praying for it to be healed. You know what? It hadn't been. If it's not healed by May 22nd, I'm going to get a new knee. <laughs> we were on this trip. It's so funny. They're all worried about me walking, you know. And they're saying, oh, you can't do it. You can't do it. You're going to hurt your knee. I said, what does it matter? I'm getting a new one. What's the <laughs> I might well wear this one out, huh? <laughs> so, hey, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Just trust him to direct your path. We know that he is loving and trustworthy. But if we don't believe this, we'll question his will. We'll question him. That's why we're told don't lean on your own understanding. Don't trust in your own ability because, see, we don't understand. I, I like this saying. It says, when I don't understand something, it's because I don't understand. For me to try to figure out God and his plan and his scope, it's just, it's hard. I can't figure it out. I don't understand all that's going on. I don't understand the ramifications of things going on. I don't understand why the world's in such a mess right now, except I know why. I don't understand why people don't turn to Jesus. That's where the answer is. Because we're not going to do that. The Bible says it. it's going to get worse and worse and worse till the end. I don't know how much worse it can get before the end comes, but we're headed that way for sure. To the degree which we are to trust God is 90%, 50, with all our heart, with all our intellect, with all our being, put our trust in him. I don't want to tell you how many times I've said, God, I don't understand this, but I trust you. I know you've got my best interest at heart. I don't understand why things happen the way they do sometimes. Instead of relying on our own knowledge and perception or reasoning, we should just put our trust in God. You say, well, that's, a, that's, that's like having a crutch. You're just crutching on God. No, I'm not crutching on God. I'm wheelchairing God. I, I can't go anywhere without him. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in it. It's all about him. I'm not just leaning on him. He's not my co-pilot. He's not my vice president. He's in charge of everything. And what he says goes. And guess what? We don't get a vote on it. He says it. That settles it. You either agree with it or disagree with it. But when God says it, it's settled. This requires more than just saying, oh, yeah, I agree that there's a God. It requires not just agreeing there is a God, agreeing with God about himself and about ourselves, about our life. We do what God says because we trust him to guide us in the right way. It's foolish to rely on our own perception. <clears throat> Think about this. We rely on our own perception. We have no idea what's going to happen in the next 30 seconds. But God does. The Bible says he sees the end from the beginning. And he said he will guide us with his eye. 
Wouldn't you rather have someone who sees the end from the beginning guide you than you try to guide yourself? Well, I'm based on what I see. That's a, that's a dumb statement to make, and we, I've all, we've all made it. But based on what I see, this is what we need to be doing. But what I see may not be real. It can change in the moment, in the blinking of an eye. Well, based on what I see, I think we ought to be investing in this over here. It could fall apart in a moment. Based on what God says, this is what we're going to do. Then you're safe. It's always safe to do what God says. That's the wise thing to do. The wise man trusts God. We can rely on his loving wisdom in all things. Verse 6 of that says, In all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths or make your path straight. To acknowledge someone means to recognize them. Like this morning, I've seen a lot of you, and I've acknowledged you. I recognize you for who you are. See, not just recognize you as being a person, but I recognize you for who you are and what you stand for. To acknowledge God means we recognize him for who he is. All supreme, all powerful, all knowing, all loving. Someone said God must have a lot of love. No, he doesn't. God doesn't have love. The Bible says he is love. There's a lot of difference in having something and being something. He is love. Acknowledge his love. That he, Everything he does responding toward us is in love. Yeah, but he chastens us. The parent who does not chasten their kid doesn't love their kid, the Bible says. Chastening done the right way is an expression of love. He said, in each and every situation, we acknowledge him by surrendering to his will in that situation. He said he'll make our paths straight. He protects us from the side roads, the detours, all the mud holes, potholes, sinkholes, whatever you want to call it. He will lead us and direct us the way we go. See, his path isn't always the easiest path, but it's always the best path. It always leads to the place that we need to be. We may think that we can do a better job of planning. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> I've done that before, haven't you? I mean, and I can laugh about it now, but I've, I've made some big mess-ups. And a lot of times God let me mess up just so he can say, look, I tried to tell you, trust me. And he didn't get mad at me. He didn't say, okay, you got, you're, going, you're, on, you're grounded. <laughs> He didn't say, okay, I'm not hearing more prayers of yours for six months because you, you didn't listen to my last prayer. It's amazing how God is so quick to receive us if we mess. Have you messed up? Maybe you're sitting here today and you're thinking, man, I messed up. God doesn't want me. Yes, he does. Not only does he just want you, he's aching for you. We talked about the story of the prodigal. I mean, the, the prodigal, the father wasn't out there. He was sitting there watching for the son to come home. He was ready. Let me tell you, God's ready for you. He said, we don't know how bad I messed up. It don't matter. You don't answer to me anyway. God knows. And he says, hey, if you'll ask me, I'll forgive you. Bring you right back into fellowship. So whoever that is, receive that today and walk in it. He said, do not be wise in your own eyes. I love smart Alex, don't you? People who are so wise, they know everything about everything. Now, God really does, but I know a lot of people who think they're God. They, you try to tell them, oh, I already know about all that stuff. I don't like people. Well, I don't like to be around people like that. <laughs> Sometimes I don't really like them. I love them. You know, God never said you have to like people. He didn't. He said you got to love them. I can love people that I don't like. People I like, I hang around with. People I love, sometimes I just love them at a distance. So if you tell somebody, you know, man, I, I really like you, that's sometimes even deeper than love. We have to love. We don't have to like. I love all you. I like most of you. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, li li listen to this, right? This is, don't be wise in your own eyes. Okay, now I'm not trying to gross you out. This is in the Bible. As a dog returns to his own, say it louder. Okay, you said I didn't. So a fool repeats his folly. Now, like I said, I'm not trying to gross you out, but you've seen it. 
The dog gets out in the yard. There it is. Goes all over here, running around, and goes back. And what's it do? It wasn't good the first time. Why do you think it's going to be good the second time? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why would you do that? But that's the way we are. We get, we, we get out here and we get in trouble. We get burnt. We do something bad. And everything goes bad. And we run back over here. And not long, we're back over there again. It didn't work the first time. Why is it going to work the second time? Because a fool is wise in his own eyes. And the dog repeats. So a fool returns to his folly. What mistakes we don't learn from and correct, guess what? We're destined to repeat. Didn't work the first time. Maybe it'll work the hundredth time. Didn't work the 99th time, but we're going to keep trying. Then the next verse in Proverbs 26, 12 said, Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There's more hope for a fool than him. I didn't say it. God said it. Don't be wise. And don't think you got it all figured out because you don't. Even if you could get it all figured out, you couldn't figure out what to do with it once you got it. <laughs> Man, I finally got it all figured out. Now what am I going to do with it? It's like the time I caught the alligator. <laughs> I was fishing in Caddo Lake, and a big gator bigger than our boat came out in front of me. I cast my lure up there and hooked it right on the snout. That thing took off. I said, what am I going to do now? I started pulling the boat around. Finally, my lure pulled out. I thought, Man, I'm glad I didn't. Glad that came loose. Sometimes we're out there like that. We're kind of fishing for alligators in this world. We finally catch one. What are we going to do with it? When we're wise in our own eyes, we catch things we wish we hadn't have caught. Maybe you've done that. Aren't you thankful God is able to redeem us and bring us out of those things? Wise in our own eyes, we will seek the Lord, listen to his directions, and trust him. You know, back the birth of Jesus says the wise men sought Jesus. Let me tell you, wise men still seek him today. Wise people still seek Jesus. Since he cannot lie, we can trust his promises. But whatever he says is true. He can't lie. Someone asked me one time, do you believe in absolute truth? Or do you believe there is an absolute truth? I said, Yeah. I believe in absolute truth. They said, name one. I said, whatever God says. Well, how can you say that? Because he can back up everything he says, so it's true. He can tell you up is down. You know it's not, and he can show you right quick. He can turn you upside down. You believe in absolute truth? Yes, what God says is absolute truth. His word is truth. He will not be deviating from it. The fourth thing says, listen to this, what it says. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Now, I've been around a few years now. And one thing I've noticed, people who live hard seem to die young. Have you noticed that? A lot of people younger than me have died, died. And, I mean, I know we're all going to die. I mean, that's not an issue unless the Lord comes back beforehand and we're pew, caught up to be with the Lord in the air, but I've seen people who, it just seems to be people who live hard, ungodly lives, don't live all that long. Now, some of them look like they're old, but they're really not. I saw one one time, I thought, man, they must be 90 years old. How old are you? 55. Whoa. <laughs> How'd that hard living work out for you? Well, I've been having a great time. I had a long, hard life. How old are you? 55. I mean, 55 is barely dry behind the ears, right? If you're my age, it is anyway. So, it will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Every day we're faced with a variety of choices. And what we do is based on whether we believe God or not. That he has a plan for our lives, that he's chosen the best possible path for us. I hear the train a coming. <laughs> it's coming round a bend. I, what, what? I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. <laughs> that reminds me of that. But if you're watching online, I hadn't gone crazy, okay? People watching online said, that dude just went crazy. <laughs> no, I didn't go crazy. There's somebody's phone went off in here. It sounded like a train whistle. Next time we have karaoke, I'll do that song for you. 
we go on another boat ride, I'm going to do karaoke. That's a song I'm going to sing. <laughs> we saw some terrible karaoke, I'm telling you. I could have done better than some of those people. They were awful. And I was sitting out there going, ah, when one of the, don't say that. I said, man, they're terrible, you know. <laughs> they don't need to be up there, but they were having fun. Where was I? I must be time to close. What do you think? <laughs> All right, let me just uh, give you some things to think about. Just think about these things now. In what area of your life do you have most difficulty trusting God? Do you have an area that's hard to trust God in? Is it with your finances? Is it with your children, your parents? I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I used to, but I got over it. <laughs> Found out they were smarter than I was. What do you have a problem with trusting God with? Is it trusting with tomorrow? You fearful for tomorrow? We could be, couldn't we? Man, it looks like things are going to fall apart, and they might. I'm just glad God is bigger than those things. If you're thinking right now and something comes to your mind, think about what area do you have trouble trusting God with? Do you have an area? Maybe you want to think, hey, you know what? I do catch myself worrying about this. If I was just trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. God, I don't understand this. I don't know what's going on. It's fearful to me, and I'm worried about it. But you know what? I'm going to trust you. I remember when we came to an awakening when we had teenage kids, and they would go out, and we would pray and concern until they got back home. Oh, God, we're just out there in that world. Anything bad could happen, you know? And then one day God said, Do you think they're any safer sitting in your lap than they are with me out there? You know, that's, that's true. There's no safety except in, your, in you. So now we just pray a hedge of protection around us all the time and trust God. It's, it's easy to think about all the fearful things that could happen with all the things going on in our world. And many people I know are trapped in fear. Pablo, you're going through that right now, aren't you? I got these three girls, man. I, <laughs> Pablo's already making lists on the refrigerator. He's got it lined out. <laughs> but see, he, Pablo and Crystal, they know how to trust God. And I depend on God. What are you not depending on God on? If you want to know what you're not depending upon God for, when I said this, what are you worried about when I brought it up? Oh, I didn't know I wasn't trusting God. I thought we were supposed to be worried about that. No, we're not. The Bible says we're not supposed to be worrying about anything. It doesn't say we're not supposed to be concerned. And there's a difference in worrying and concern, but sometimes we consider we take worry and turn it into concern. Sometimes instead of praying, we're just complaining to God. We're worrying to God. God, I've just got all this stuff going on as if he doesn't know. You say, God, I trust you with this. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. God, I don't understand it, but I'm not leaning on my own understanding. It's okay to be honest with God. Did you know that? Because he knows. I was praying one time, and, and, and I know you think I'm weird, but I was praying one time, and I literally in my spirit heard God laughing. And I said, well, I stopped my prayer. I said, <laughs> so crazy. But maybe it was just my, anyway. I said, God, you know I'm not telling the truth, don't you? What I'm praying about, I would want saying I want your will. I don't want your will. I want my will. I'm praying. And, and I just said, you know what, God? Thank you for showing me that. But I wasn't, try, I wasn't trying to pray his will done. I was saying what I wanted done. But I was saying, let your will be done. He said, no, you don't want my will. It was about a football game, Coach. <laughs> I want to win that game, God. We got to win tomorrow night. We didn't win. But I got the victory anyway. That was too many years ago. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him or direct your paths. What are you having difficulty trusting God for? What do you think right now in your life? Think, what do you think is too hard for God? You've got to handle it yourself. Say that to yourself and realize how dumb that sounds. God, I'm, worried, I'm really worried about this. I, I'm going to have to handle this myself. I don't think you can handle it. Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make a bit of sense to me. Because, see, when people say stuff like that, it's because they don't trust God. They don't really believe God will interact and intervene. There have been so many times in our lives when I've prayed something like that and I've thought, 
God, you've got to intervene because I can't do this. It's bigger. It's impossible. But that's one of the definitions of faith. Faith sees the invisible, believes the improbable, and accomplishes the impossible. What are you having a hard time trusting God with? What promises in his word to bring you assurance of his trustworthiness? If you have, you have some scripture you can stand on, God is faithful. He will not permit you to be tempted above that which you're able. You got some scriptures to stand on? My God supplied all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You got to know the word. You got to have the word and quote the word because the word is truth. And when you speak the truth, it changes the way you think. Does knowing God is sovereign over all events of your life help you trust him? A little side note, it's easier to trust someone that you know very well than someone you don't know. So what does that mean? You need to get to know him. To know him well enough to know he can be trusted because we won't trust someone that we don't know. Do you need to get to know him better? How do we do that? How do we get to know God better? Well, since the scripture is God's self-revelation, it's God's word. We need to increase our time reading the Bible. Well, I read the Bible. It doesn't make that much sense to me. Well, maybe you ought to just stop and say, God, I, want, I need a word from you. First of all, let me say, you've got to be born again, okay? The Bible doesn't make sense to lost people. It's just a book of history and, and misprints and stuff like that. Because, see, the Bible is written to God's children. It's, it's his letter to his children. So until you become a believer, the Bible doesn't make sense to you. But once you're a believer, it's God's love letter to you. So read it. You say, well, I've read it. I don't understand it. Ask him to give you understanding. Read some Psalm. Read some Proverbs. Read John, the book of John. And kind of get, start getting some understanding. And ask God to give you revelation. So the Bible is a spiritual book, and it's spiritually discerned. But if you're born again, you have spiritual discernment. When we try to read the Bible to understand it with our natural understanding, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But when we say, God, show me the truth in this scripture. Reveal it to me. Do you need to get to know him better? Are you struggling with some decisions? Don't you bow your head this morning. Just bow your head. If you're struggling with some decisions, I know that uh, I saw last week that some of you responded that you were Troubling with some, being troubled with some decisions. I hope you got those settled. Maybe there's some others today that are struggling with decisions. We're, this, you know, decisions come and go. We're never free of making decisions. Maybe you're struggling with something today that, that you really need an answer from God. Okay, here's some deep revelation for you. Ask him. But ask him from the standpoint of whatever you say, that's the rule, God. I'm not asking you for direction so I can decide if I want to do it or not. I'm asking you for direction so I can know for sure which way to turn. God's will is not a smorgasbord that he lays out there and you go by and pick and choose what you want. Get all the ice cream and the candy and the sweets and throw away the good stuff. God says, what I have for you is good for you, and it'll be good to you. Do you need to make a decision right there this morning to say, God, I've been kind of playing around with this thing, and you know what? It doesn't really matter. I just want to know what you want because true faith follows. Follows what? Follows God's leadership. It trusts in the Lord with all its heart and does not lean on its own understanding, but all its ways acknowledges him, and, and he directs your paths. And that's what he wants to do today with you. He wants to direct your path, guide you. He wants to bring you close. Maybe you sense that you've kind of alienated yourself from God, maybe by some decisions you've made, some things that have been going on in your life you've kind of gotten. I know people who sometimes get angry with God because things didn't work out the way they thought they should. Maybe sometimes you ought to thank God for unanswered prayers because unanswered prayers are an answered prayer. No is just as much an answer to prayer as yes is. And when there's God has said some no in our lives, I'm sure glad he did looking back because had he said yes, we wouldn't be where we are today. I'd much rather be where I am today than where I would have been if I'd 
moved in that other direction. If you're watching online and you're needing some direction, ask him. The Bible doesn't stumble or stutter. It says this, if you lack wisdom, ask God. And he will give it to you liberally. It will not upgrade you. It will not chastise you. If we stand this morning, if you need to come down for prayer, I'll be glad to pray with you, pray over you, pray in agreement with you. We stand right now if you need to come. If you've never put your faith and trust in Christ like we talked about at the beginning, you need to do that today. I would, not, I would never want to play roulette with my eternity. Well, you, I'll have another time, you say. You may not. I've heard of so many instances where people said, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I want to be born again, but I just don't want to do it right now. They never had the right now. They never got the chance. Every day, people are going out of this life into eternity without Jesus Christ. What a fearful thing that would be. Eternal, eternal separation from God. Eternal condemnation because we chose to bear our own sin rather than give it to Jesus who said he bore our sins for us. God made him who knew no sin to become sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Anyone need to come this morning real quickly? What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name. say a special thank you for praying for us last week. We uh, enjoyed being there, but so glad to be back home with all of you. And we love you and appreciate you. And so glad to have some of Michelle's family and friends visiting with us. They're camped out south of town out here in RV Park and just want to come uh, worship with us today. Thank you guys for coming. We appreciate it so much. Enjoy visiting with you. Rose, go ahead and close, please. All right, let's just go ahead and pray. God, we just thank you for this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are and the way that you've spoken throughout this entire service, God. We just thank you for the way that you speak to our hearts, the things that you teach us, God. Help us to take it with us this week and not just be something that stops here. God, but we just thank you, Lord, for just the faith that's rising up in each and every one of us. God, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him some praise in the room. Awesome. Well, as Pastor Steve said, it's been so amazing to worship with you. Pastor Steve will be over there if you'd like to speak with him this morning, and we'll see you later.